You need to check this mini PC. I'm watching a movie. It's an Intel Meteor Lake. Yeah. It's pretty good at emulation. This one plays games. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. Guess what came in the post? It's another GMK Tech mini PC. This has been sent to us directly from them for the purpose of video review. No cash has been exchanged and all opinions are our own. This one's the K9 32 one terabyte Japanese version. Let's open her up. Whoa, a bit tighter than we expected. And this is looking pretty clean. It's a nice silver color, similar to the K8 that also had AR features. Okay. Very tight. We like this little hologram sticker. Look at that. And here we have the piece of card and inside the instruction manual. There's around 14 languages in here, but there are some very silly mistakes. The uh, Intel Core Super Processor Ultrat 5. A nice addition for the Japanese market is a guide on installing a Japanese keyboard for Windows. Microsoft have never made this easy. Underneath that we have two boxes. First one has a power cable, a HDMI cable, one meter in length, a vase mount in case you want to attach the PC to the back of your monitor, under a desk, or on the wall. Now for the other box. We have a power adapter, and this outputs at 19 volts, 6.32 amps, up to 120 watts. And we also get a business card. Whee! Let's have a closer look. So yeah, indeed, it's a very clean PC, and it's non-intrusive, so it fit in an office environment. Not exactly cute, but yeah. On the front we have the BIOS reset, the power switch, three and a half mil headphone jack, USB-C Thunderbolt 4, and two USB 3.2 ports. On the right side we have a grill for air intake, and on the rear is where all the action is. We have two USB 3.2 ports, display port, HDMI, two Ethernet LAN ports, these go up to 2.5 gigabits, DC in, here's where the air gets blown out, and of course, Kensington. Kensington. On this side we have another grill for air intake, but well, let's have a look underneath. In the center we have more holes for cooling, labels, and screw holes for the vase mount. We also have four rubber feet in the corners, and they stand up quite tall in order to aid cooling. Well, let's take a look at the specs. The GMK Tech K9 has a 14-core Intel CPU. Usually Intel computers excel at productive tasks, and we doubt that this will be any different in that regard. There is the addition of AI, and we're excited to try out the new line of internal GPUs. With 32GB of DDR5 and a fast NVMe drive, it should be ample for a new user. We have Windows 11 Pro, and many choices of video output. However, as we don't have HDMI 2.1, we'll need to rely on DisplayPort or USB-C for high refresh rates. It's about time for the size comparison. The K9 is slightly larger than the very cute Geekcom A7. It's exactly the same size as GMK Tech's K8. It's absolutely dwarfed by Ace Magic's AD08. And it's an A500 Mini. A Nintendo Game Boy. 3.5 inch floppy disk. And measuring tape. 160 centimeters tall G Cop. Yum yum. This mini PC is four times the size of a Typo tea bag. Tea time. After connecting our mini PC to monitor, speakers, and an all in one keyboard, we can turn it on. Then, on first boot, we're greeted to the Windows setup screen. In here, we decide things such as language, username, and keyboard settings. This will take a few minutes, so have a cup of tea handy. Always ready for tea time. And before you know it, we are good to go. Indeed, we have the Intel 125H, and all our specs check out. Windows 11 Pro is on the computer, but to activate it, we need to go online. Before we do that, we'll first check for tampering, and both Edge and Defender settings check out. So we'll just connect to our Wi-Fi, and now Windows will automatically activate online. We can fully update Windows, as well as Intel driver updates, without any issue. We then went to Ninite.com to download some free tools, which is definitely recommended if you get a new computer. Followed by full system scans of both anti-malware bytes and Avast, which tells us our system is clean of any viruses. On the whole, the Windows experience is extremely snappy. Using Office to write up text or make spreadsheets is no issue. It'll work fine with 2D graphics like Krita and Photoshop, or even if you need a computer for music production. And with this fast CPU, memory, NVMe, and use of Intel Sync, you can't really go wrong if you wanted to use this for video production, making it a good main, backup, or mobile rig if needed. For things like internet use or online shopping, of course this computer can do it no problem. Here it is on Amazon for 669 
but if you want a better deal, please check out the links below, where I've left you coupon codes for each option available. Moving on to video streaming, here's Amazon Prime with a HD button lit. Netflix. And a bit of 4K YouTube. Moving on to the benchmarks now, we can see that the Intel 125H has really gained some ground against the Ryzen machines. While Intel's CPU scores were always fairly decent, huge improvements can be seen with their internal graphics, which according to the TimeSpy benchmark, equals those of the higher up Ryzen mini PCs. Here's some Cinebench, and also Shizuku, showing us some decent performance on the NVMe. As we have HDMI 2.0, we're limited to just under 100Hz and ultra-wide 1440p. If we use DisplayPort, we can get 144Hz at 8-bit, and if you need anything more, you've got the USB-C with Thunderbolt 4. Wi-Fi strength was acceptable, but could be better, running at 72%, with the router 20 meters away through two layers of drywall. There was no drop connections, and we can easily pair up and use our Bluetooth controller. It's about time for some games. We'll be aiming for 1080p, and this little computer can run 2D games like Cuphead, no problem. Believe it or not, Super Wooden GP2 is a good test for graphics performance. Usually with Intel Mini PCs, we need to lower to 720p, but here, we're at full speed. Dota 2, best looking settings, 1080p. At around 70 to 80 FPS, no complaints here. The next up is Fortnite. Run the fast renderer setting at 1080p epic, and it's surprisingly playable. Heroes in a half show, da da bawa. But there is some stuttering every now and then. Here's Rocket League 1080p high quality settings, and it's running really well. And while playing this game, the CPU stayed quite cool around 63 degrees Celsius. So let's move on to Counter Strike 2. 1080p high settings. It's not bad at 40 FPS, but for lower quality to medium, we're above 70. When it comes to the benefits of AI Boost, there is a list of games that use XEWS, essentially Intel's version of AMD's FSR. Let's give it a try in Diablo. Here's 1080p low settings. But if you enable XEWS in balanced, gives us 60 FPS in low, medium, and it's even playable in high. Now let's move on to Forza Horizon 5. At 1080p resolution, we're in the mid 30s, but lowering it to 720p low, we can pretty much double it, making it really playable. And in this case, if we add XSS to the mix, nothing much is gained, but we do have a loss in smoothness and clarity. Cyberpunk 2077, let's quickly check through the settings. The system is pretty good for games, but for Cyberpunk and the more demanding titles, you're going to need a faster chip. As for emulation, this system actually does pretty good. For Wii U, once the shaders have been compiled, we're at full speed, and Switch Emulation 2 was extremely playable. And the same applies to the PlayStation 3. For higher-end emulation, this is the most capable Intel chip we've had so far on the channel. So what if you don't want to use Windows? Well on this external SSD we have Batasera installed. It's a Linux distro, and it's a great front end for all of our emulation needs. We had issues booting up with Batasera 38, but using Batasera 39 it works out of the box. We can connect to our Wi-Fi router, no problem, and the same can be said with the Bluetooth controller, which we connected with no issues whatsoever. Sound is also working fine, but let's see what else this can emulate. Arcade. Model 3.
computers such as the Atari ST. Commodore Amiga. MS-DOS. Or consoles, such as the PC Engine CD Rom Rom. Atari Jaguar. GameCube. A more demanding GameCube game. Or Xbox. Let's take a look inside. The K9 is very easy to open, all we need to do is lift off the lid. Now we can see the system fan with the top plate. With the posi screwdriver, we can remove four of the screws from each corner. Then use something plastic to pry the plate, and we can slowly move it to the side. The system fan is a 40mm 1.8 amp, here's the MVME, and also if you need any more storage, there's a spare slot next to it. On the storage we have a heatsink with a nice touch. And we have a Mason Semi MC7000. We've seen one of these before in the GMK Tech K8, and they're produced by Yangtze Memory Technologies, who have had ties with Apple in the past. For the memory we have two sticks of Crucial DDR5, which we've seen in many other mini PCs. We can see the two Wi-Fi antennas at the front of the case, and they're using an Intel AX201. We removed the storage, and inserted a blank one in the center slot. But as the fan is directly above it, we cannot use a heatsink for the NVMe in the center slot. As Batacero worked out okay, we tried a few other Linux distros, and unfortunately in the case of Popos 22.04, and even the latest release of Ubuntu, the audio was just not there. We see this quite often with newer processors, and it'll take a while for Linux to get full compatibility with Meteor Lake. So let's get back to Windows, and check out temps, noise, and power draw. Here's idle, 45 watts, and it's very quiet and it's pulling 13 watts from the wall. If we add a load to it, for example the benchmark on Grid Autosport, the CPU will sit around 60. The fan is audible, but it's not too noisy. And this pulls 45 watts from the wall. HWinfo reported that some throttling was going on, but there's no jerking us or slowdown. Frame rate was constant, and the temperatures seemed fine. This is probably something that can be fixed with BIOS settings or an update. Switching to performance mode in BIOS gave us an extra 10 to 15 frames in this game. However, it made it much more of a noisier system. It's pulling 65 watts from the wall, but again with the same warnings from HWinfo. We then tested with Cyberpunk 2077, and we did have a couple more frames, but then it started to stutter very badly. This only happened in performance mode, so it's best to stick with the balance setting in the BIOS. We can see from these charts it does get pretty hot, but maybe GMK Tech can fix it in a future BIOS update. Perhaps there's a setting already in here, as this BIOS is extremely complete. Options we can change are power mode. We can turn off AI function. We can alter power limits. And we can fine tune fan settings. Mm. It's time for the pros and the cons. The K9 with its strong CPU, memory and fast NVMe is a very solid mini PC, currently at a decent price. It comes with Windows 11 Pro, and in balance mode, it's a quiet computer. Unless that is, you turn on performance mode in the BIOS. HWinfo reports throttling, and the current lack of Linux compatibility may put some people off. If you're still weighing up the options between a K8 and a K9, we'd say go for the Intel if your focus is on productivity. If you want a bit more gaming performance, go for the Ryzen. GMK Tech have finally shown us an Intel mini PC that's not only a one-trick pony. At last, AMD has competition. And it's about time for a summary. Ryzen, mini PC, that 
we had on last month. 